Hello and welcome to this video. Um, I have recently been publishing some photographs and some 3D um, images onto a Discord server, or actually several, because people have been asking me how I use Affinity Designer with Blender. And it a lot of people didn't know that you could actually, you know, you could actually do this. So what I've done is I sent up some um, simple uh, simple stuff and I'm going to explain you know basically what I'm going to be going through so here we've got straightforward curves um, here we've got raster objects and here we've got text and I'm going to go through very quickly how to get this kind of thing into Blender so that you can make it into a 3D object that you can then manipulate and mold and sculpt and animate and do what you like with it okay so this is very very simple straightforward it took me um, quite a few goes to try and figure out now this is not a new thing for me um, what is new for me is affinity designer um, I've done a whole video about how you know I used to use serif products before and all that kind of thing and I could not use what used to be the equivalent uh, draw plus um, with Blender. In fact, there are very few programs that you can get um, vector graphic and um, curves out of into a format that Blender will recognize. The only program that I have ever come across that does this successfully um, that I've used is uh, Inkscape. Now, I'm not a great fan of Inkscape. I use it, but I'm not a great fan of it. I now no longer use Inkscape because I now use Affinity Designer, which, to be honest with you, I hit the ground running on this from day one. Um, it really is an amazing program. So I'm going to go through this very simply. Use your own imagination. Use your intuition as to what you see and what you think um, you know, you can use this for and linking it into Blender. Why do I do it? Because it's easier to do it in Affinity Designer than it is to try and do exactly the same thing in Blender. And I'm all for using tools, using other pieces of software in order to get what I want when I'm in Blender. Okay, that's why I use it. Um, you know, if you want to learn how to try and do the same thing in Blender, then you're welcome because there are things that Blender does extremely good and there are a lot of things that it cannot do, um, in my opinion, very well. And I just find it really easier to do it in another program and bring it in. So quite simply, um, let's just start the ball rolling on here. This is what I'm calling just straight, straightforward um, curves. OK, you've uh, any one of these tools here in Affin Infinity Affinity Designer um, basically draws uh, curves. OK, you can use the pen tool, which is what this is, is um, being designed in. You know, this was just the straightforward pen tool, you know, lines. Boom, you draw it out and link it up. Um, you know, you can use that. This one here is using the paintbrush tool. OK, and again, you've got all the control, everything that you do with the paintbrush, whatever it is you design um, can be exported out and used in Blender. OK, so this is just literally a straightforward squiggly line. The other thing I use it for is for getting designs. So I've got an image behind here of some iron, um, raw iron, you know, work. Um, again, all I've done is I've used the, the um, vector brush tool to follow the ironwork to get those curves and the, and the pattern and everything. Now, if you wanted to, you could use the pen tool and, and, and follow this ironwork all the way around and create, you know, uh, you know an all-in-one you you do it however you want but the fact that the matter is no matter how you do it you're going to be able to bring this into blender um, you know it's it's up to you but this is what I use it for I use it for you know I want this kind of iron work 
but I am no good at using Bezier curves inside Blender and trying to get this kind of thing. Um, it's just really hard work. I can just bring a photograph into Affinity Designer um, and just copy this then round really, really quickly um, and, and then get it into Blender really, really quickly. So I'm going to show you um, now the same applies to all of these. The only thing that's different is this is basically one curve line. Um, this is one curve line. This is probably this ironwork is one, two, three, four curved lines. OK, there's two ways of bringing these things into Blender. You can either kind of group all these things together and they become one object or you can typically what I do is I bring them in as four separate objects. So it doesn't really matter how you do it. I could bring all of this, you know, I could bring this and this in because these are two separate objects they're not joined together by any means and if I bring them into blender they are going to still remain separate okay that's how that works um, now the other thing is when you right and click on something you always want whatever it is you do in affinity designer and we're going to go through the stages with the other objects you want to make sure that you have, you've obviously I am working with curves here I know I'm working with curves because that's the tools that I'm actually using and so you want to convert them to curves obviously that option is not available because they're already curves right so what we do is we highlight all the objects we want to bring into blender we now want to go file export you're going to select SVG um, I would recommend that you actually uh, just go for SVG for export okay don't play around with stuff. I just find if you play around with any of these options too much, you know, like you've got lots of SVG options there. Just don't don't play around with them. This works and it works fine. Select the DPI. Now, typically one to one. So whatever it is you've designed on your page, if you want it to look exactly the same size, you export it out at 96 DPI. If you're not bothered, put it at 400 because it just makes it bigger you're going to select the area now you want to select selection without background and the same this applies to everything you are going to export out and go into blender okay the same settings um, selection without background you don't need to do anything else you're going to export this out now this is I've, I've obviously done this already and, and I'm going to call it curves iron work okay so I'm just going to overwrite that file save yes i'm going to overwrite it boom you now go into blender all right i've got an empty this is just a completely empty um thing in here in fact the only things you know let me just because i've just been testing this out and making sure that i've got my um the only things i've got and i'll turn them off um is the camera and the light okay so you want to kind of zoom in really you know these are one meter square so zoom in because they do come in quite small and I think that's the one thing that people trip up on so you're going to go file and you can do this in the middle of a build as well okay so you don't need to just create a file with one thing in it I've I've done you know quite large builds and I want to a fancy design of some sort I will do exactly this file import scalable vector graphics svg okay you're going to go and find where that file is we saved the file as curves iron work and then we just import it and there it is that is exactly what it is now obviously we're working in a 2d object from a 2d object and we're bringing it into a 3d application it is still kind of you know 2d if you like there isn't any um, Z thickness to this. You've got X and Y only. But what you do now, these are all separate objects. OK, I can click on them and they're all separate. OK, they're all separate. Now you have to remember that these are still curves. OK, this is quite key. These are all still curves. Now, the beauty with these curves is now I did this, you know, this isn't particularly very neat <laughs> so if I if I used 
you know, a very thin paintbrush uh, to, to do this, I would get a very thin line. If I had used a very heavy brush, then I would get a heavy line. It's as simple as that. So let me show you what this looks like. When we go into edit mode, you can see that, um, yeah, there we go. Right, so you can see the vertices here. They're all selectable. They all work like proper curves and you can move them around. Um, if I select vertices, there we go. Right. And I can move that around. I can manipulate it. It's exactly like curves if you're familiar with curves. You know, you can select them, you can you can resize them, and whatever you want to do. <clears throat> if you want to make this effectively, you know, have some substance to it, as in um, make turn it into mesh, so it's no different than whatever else you do. Highlight the whole lot. Um, you can then go into the curves option, which is the little green curly line down here. Um, you then go to geometry you can extrude it okay watch what happens you can extrude that object right um, you can obviously give it some depth you know you can manipulate it and whatever you want to do with it there you know I'm just going to distort this let's just completely distort this thing okay so you know you've you've got lots of options available to you this is still a curve okay Okay, let's just say we're happy with this. What we do now is we right hand click on the object. Let's just select this one object. Okay, so if we look at the the um, geometry of that still, you see this is kind of like a modifier. It hasn't yet been applied. So what, what you can see in on the inside is basically the curves that we brought in from Affinity Designer. So we go back into object mode, we right hand click and we can now convert to mesh. This is now no longer a curve object, it is now mesh. But let me show you what happens. Okay, there we go. We've now got, you know, this, this is looking a mess because I haven't taken my time doing it and whatnot, you know, but there we go. You can now manipulate this and do what you like with it. You know, you can now select lines. Um, you know, you can use this object for sculpting just like you would do anything else. OK, I'm not going to keep repeating myself on that one. Um, let's go back to object mode. Let's delete this. So if we go back to designer again, that's that's straightforward curves. The same would apply to any of these objects here. Um, you know, I can bring that object straight into Blender and manipulate it, um, you know, in exactly the same way. If we move to raster objects, this also gets really, really interesting. And there's a couple of things I want to show you here. OK, so these are literally boxes. OK, they're they're raster objects. And they're three separate objects there. What you need to do with these is because they are not curves, you need to make them curves. Otherwise, if you try exporting this out as an SVG and bringing that into um, Blender, nothing happens. It it just you know you get the, the the file name, but you don't get any geometry. So the only the only way you can bring this into Blender is right hand click on it and convert to curves. Now I can export this out. SVG, I'm going to keep it at 400. I want just the selection without the background. I'm going to export and I'm just going to call this boxes. OK, back into Blender. We're now going to bring in those boxes. So we're now working on raster objects that have been converted to curves. I'm going to keep saying it and there we go. Now, do you see what I see? Isn't that interesting? We've actually brought over the materials or the textures that were applied in Affinity Designer. Call that cool. I think it's cool. Got to remember that these are curves. See, you've got the, 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 the little green menu on the right hand side here. Again, you know, you can go in here, you can extrude. They're all separate objects as well. OK, 
That's the other thing to remember is they're all separate objects. Now, something that you have to remember when you bring in, and this will apply more to text, which is going to be the next thing that I'll show you. Um, so we're going to bring that in. You can still see that this is kind of a modifier applied and that you are only seeing um, that, which is the curves. OK. Now, you may need to play around with this yourself but there are ways around that so you know again each of these are separate objects blah de blah um, you can extrude them now what's key is lowering down the resolution quite a bit and I'll show you the reason why well let's leave it it defaults to 12 okay um, if I now right hand click on there convert to mesh you'll see what happens right so it kind of triangulates it which is not a problem you'll see this more though if you start manipulating it as a curve or when you start bringing in text which is not a problem but generally speaking you know this isn't this isn't really much of a problem if we select another object I want to um, increase the depth of it now let's say we want to do that with it okay which is rather nice looking you know object and if we look you've got all the material you've got the material that came with it from affinity designer which is quite neat you may or may not want to do that but if you design something and you've drawn on it and whatever it will it will come over as a material with a texture applied to it or, or just a color um, okay so we go back to the curves um, let's just say I like that um, I'm now going to right hand click and convert it to mesh okay see what happens nice clean lines I just think this is so cool why are more people not doing this you know so in a way you kind of have to think 2d object bring it into blender turn it into a 3d object you know you've got all the array of tools available to you inside blender to manipulate what you've designed or or drawn or whatever in in affinity designer and bring it in let's delete that now very quickly how are we doing on time i don't really want to be too oh, i don't know i don't want to be too long on this oh there we go oh crikey we're up to 17 minutes already um so the same would apply to all of these objects here it, it would be exactly the same now let's just say this object here in fact actually let me just hide this and show you a, a use for this which is very very clever let's just say you take the designs of a house okay you've got the you've got the design you know behind on i just put it onto one layer and lowered the opacity down so that it's you know and all i've done then is create another layer and i've literally used the 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 uh, rectangle tool and created rectangles it doesn't matter about the color or anything and i the, all of these are separate okay they're all separate so um, you end up with you know I didn't do the the internals or anything I mean again you can fill this up make it as complicated as you like um, so basically let's say you want to design a house in blender with that wall perimeter on there ideally what you need to do is they've got to remember they're all separate objects in fact there are 16 altogether what you really need to do now is right hand click no first of all you need to combine them so there are there are 16 objects there you need to go up here and add click on add and it combines all of them into one object but it's also converted them to curves okay so now they're just one object export again same thing SVG 400 we want selection without background um, let's do this is rust objects let's just call it house okay we've saved that as an SVG file we go into blender we bring that SVG file in we want our raster objects house which has been converted to curves we import that in okay 
can you see where this is going to go this is one object and it's curves you can resize this let's scale it up a bit if we want um, you know we can read oops I don't want to really do that scale up okay there's our house border plan I could have all the interior walls and everything in there I could write text where doors can go you know whatever it is I'm gonna right hand click on this convert to mesh guess what I can do with it now extrude no have I converted that extrude Z Ooh, why is that not doing that then okay that's definitely mesh extrude oh duh you need to be in in edit mode sorry I'm getting excited extrude Z okay there you go there's our house walls I'll leave it to your imagination to what you can do with this I've produced some amazing stuff really quickly um, by using the, the the plans of a house um, you know and and it's and it, it's just it just works it just absolutely works okay last thing I just hope in a way that this inspires people to think differently about how to to do things because you know I I get kind of sick and tired of doing things you know I'm not really I can do things in blender um, but I'm not really very um, and I've used blender for for quite a long time probably f at least 15 to 20 years I've been using blender um, and it, I just still can't get my head around a lot of this stuff text okay text is not um, curves but again you can bring to any any text at all anything that you like you have to convert it to curves and it's much the same thing now you are probably thinking well I could do that in blender already um, you know yes you can but it's a real pain in the bum to do it because you have to type in a line of text and delete it and, and type in really what you want highlight the whole thing then go and load a font in blah -de blah -de blah it's so much easier to do it in this so you type your text and whatever your text is going to be you right hand click on there you convert it to curves you're now going to save that export it out yep yeah, let's do that with that export let's call that text um, sample okay we go into blender same thing import SVG file text sample import there's our text okay now I didn't flatten it they're all individual I could have I should have really maybe flattened it it doesn't really matter because I can do that really quickly in blender um, that is the line of text it's still all curves I can extrude it okay I can um, rotate it on X 90 bring it in um, resize it whatever the color would have been it would have brought that in the thing that I really love now using Inkscape or any other program and I haven't used an awful lot of programs because a lot of programs don't do SVG files for blender very well they are awful but what I found with um, SVG files coming out of designer is they are extremely clean okay this is still a curve we convert it to mesh now you're probably going to be absolutely horrified if you do um, text anyway in blender it can look it can be very very heavy on the old vector on the old um, vertices and such like okay I mean it's very clean and if you're not worried about you know the amount of vertices and such like that are in there and edges and such like what you can do is you can apply a modifier to decimate 
um, put it on the planar, planar, planar side of things and bring it down until you it will it will basically without destroying it too much just keep an eye on and it will bring the vertice count or the face count down quite a lot so what was it at is it was at 17 oh it's now already at so let me just i can't remember now what it was at let's just find out what it was at so it's at um edges 41,000 and 17,000 faces Okay, so we're going to add a decimate. We're going to do it on the planar, planar, planar. And we're going to go up, and it's bringing the face count right down. But you have to be careful about what your what your object looked like. So we're going from about seventeen thousand. We've dropped that right down to about one thousand seven hundred, roughly. You know, there's a little bit of corruption there, but you know, if you if you're going to be careful about this, you would keep an eye. But that's dropped it quite considerably. If we apply that now, you know, it depends on what you're using this for, and it has actually dropped it down quite a lot. But can you see how it got rid of? It made basically all the faces, um, pretty much engons. You know, which you may or may not want. But anyway, that's certainly brought down the vertices. Um, that's basically it. I hope this has been useful. I haven't done my normal waffling on too much. Um, and I, again, as I say, leave it up to your imagination to see what you can use affinity for that will make your life easier, bringing things into Blender and getting the designs you want and working with it. Okay, thank you very much for watching the video and I will see you again in another video.